Hey ladies, it's Ashley Shepard coming to you in the dark. It's totally creepy. Um, looks totally creepy from here. So um, you're going to have to bear with me tonight. So I'm going to let a couple y'all hop on, make sure that you can hear me okay. Um, I don't know who is on. All right, so whoever's hopping on, can you hear me okay? Yay, I think you can hear me. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so, um, hey Brittany, so I am, we had to come to Florida. Um, my husband's grandfather did pass away, um, and so we had a camping trip planned, and so we just canceled that camping trip and brought our camper to Florida so we can attend the funeral tomorrow, and so we brought our boys, and we have our dog, and um, the only place that this uh, campground has Wi-Fi is at the office, so I'm in my husband's truck. Actually, let me lock the doors. Hang on. So I'm locked in my husband's truck now. Um kind of creepy out here um but we are actually right by the beach camping by the beach which is beautiful so the funerals tomorrow we'll be able to see some family and celebrate the life of Ron's grandfather he was 90 years old um he was ready to see Jesus and so um we're just we're you know we're excited to see family but um my oldest Wilson did cry whenever we told him that Grandpa Shepherd had passed away. Um, he has been able to spend some time with him, and so um, I believe that this is the first, um, you know, family member to pass away for my oldest that, to really understand. So um, anyway, it's just you know, it's it's one of those things. It's sad, but we have the hope that we'll see him again one day. So we're blessed over that. So thanks for hanging with me in the dark. I, I did not want to leave you hanging for the first week of Made to Crave, and excuse my. Um, nasalness. I actually have a really horrible cold. Um, so if you could pray for me, I've really been attacked in a lot of different areas of my life. Um, since I got back from my trip last week, um, since we got back Monday, we, Ryan's grandfather passed away. Um, we found mold in our basement and then our air conditioning unit went completely out. And so we have to buy like a $10,000 air conditioning unit and then we have a mouse in our house and then I got sick. And so it has just been like one thing after another and I have completely felt attacked, but I've really used this time to really cry out to the Lord. And, um, and so that's, that's the beauty of our God is that we're never alone and we're never dealing with our stuff by ourselves. And I have spent lots of time in God's word and, uh, just, you know, clinging to him. And so these are just small little attacks, um, as I edit, finish editing our final copy of the book. So I know where it's coming from. It's coming from the enemy, but Jesus is going to make it beautiful because he always does. So as we dive into Made to Crave, what we're going to do is we are going to do a quick discussion for chapters one and two. If you've got your book, awesome. If not, great. I would love for you to comment here, even if you're watching this recording, um, because I would love for you just to get your feedback from you, because this is a book that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And the reason being is I have been on my own journey of losing weight and my own journey of having, um, lots of food addictions. Um, I love food so much. I'm from East Tennessee. And so that's all we do is, is eat here. Right. So, um, so I have struggled with my weight after I had both my boys. I actually got up to close to 280 pounds and I went on my own little journey. And so I realized during my journey of losing weight, it took me about two years to lose a hundred pounds. What I learned in that is that food was controlling me. So whether I went to a birthday party or a shower, whatever I, ha I was there, if there were, was food in front of me, I was consuming it. So what I realized in the process was that I had to take control of my health. And what happened was, as I was taking control of my health, that started a ripple effect in my life, and I started taking control in other areas. And so I did this book at church um, with a group of ladies um, when I had started my journey, and really the Lord used this book. And what I love about chapter one, my favorite quote is this on page 20, 
is she says, I believe God made us to crave. And it's so true. I think that we have, we all as women especially, have this strong, strong desire. We have this um, kind of like this void that we need to be filled. And a lot of us, it may come out where we crave food or sugar. Maybe, I mean, maybe at, in seasons of your life you've had, you know, alcohol or, you know, drug addictions or you know, relationship uh, cravings and addictions and things like that. But for a lot of women, it is food. And for me, it's food. I eat when I'm hungry, when I'm sad, I'm a stress eater. I constantly want food to fill that void. And so I realized that when I was set uh, on my journey to lose weight, probably within the first six days of my journey, I realized that I love food way too much and that it was dictating everything, every emotion that I had, I clung to food. And so what she talks about on page 20 is we were made to crave, to long for, to want greatly, desire eagerly, and beg for God. And so um, I'm laughing at my sister here because she just said that she just ate Oreos. So Oreos and mint chocolate chip ice cream are my sister and I's favorite sweet treats. And so we struggle together with those. Um, and so you're going to hear us reference Oreos a lot. Um, and yes, Keely, I am sick. So, so here's what I love about this. We were, we had this desire to crave, uh, something and, and God put it in our hearts to crave the Lord. And so what she really references, what I really love that she really kind of made me just, it was like a big slap in the face is that what we focus, what we crave, we crave what we focus on, period. We crave what we focus on. And so in my journey of where I had, had gained all that weight and even the journey where I was losing weight. I craved what I focused on. I focused on food constantly. Food was around everything. You know how it is? You have a death in the family, you eat. You have a, you have a birthday, you eat. You just get have girls night, you eat Mexican. That's just what you do. And so what we crave, we focus on. We, when we're focused on all of those things, what happens is it becomes a habit. And so over time, that's what happens. Well, her kind of shift is that she went all the way back to Adam and Eve and how the enemy, the serpent, um, tested and tempted Eve with food, right? God told Adam and Eve, they lived in the perfect world with the Lord. Can you imagine living in the, the, a perfect world with the Lord, being able to walk up to God, ask him questions, sit with him, talk with him, um, be with him and, and live in such a perfect world with, with no emotions and different things like that. Just imagine that for just a second and think about this. Think about this. God didn't want us to be robots, right? He wanted us to have a choice. And that's when he said, uh, do not eat off of this tree that's in the middle of this uh, garden. You were, you know, I asked that you do not eat off this tree. And so they had one job, right? And what happens? The second Eve is over there near the tree. The serpent comes, which we know is Satan. And he doesn't say, Eve you need to eat this fruit because it tastes amazing. He doesn't say, I'm going to get, give you a list of 10 reasons why you need to eat this fruit. What he says is this. He asks one question. Are you sure that God said that to not eat from this tree? Are you sure that that's what God said? So what happened was she started questioning, right? She questioned whether or not that's what God said. And then she started justifying her actions. And not only that, when Adam walked up, she was like, here you go, Adam, let's eat off this tree. And so you start to, to see this pattern or this habit. And that's what I want to talk to you about is just the patterns. I had gotten myself in a pattern of eating Oreos or chips or whatever was in my cabinet when my boys would go to bed. My husband would go to bed, I would get in my cabinets, the cookie monster would come out, and I would like binge eat. I would get all the wrappers and I would stuff it at the bottom of my trash can so nobody saw and nobody knows who ate it, right? <sighs> yeah, right. Um, and that's what I did. I had a pattern and a habit in my life because I had a craving because of I was stressed. So my feeling was stress and my craving was I went straight to the food. 
in that field of void very short term and then I would wake up feeling like crap my clothes wouldn't fit and, it, and there's a pattern there I would have a meltdown in my closet and so my emotions were just all over the place and so what I want to share with you and what I love that she pulled out for me personally was that Eve craved what she focused on so she focused on the food that's what she craved so um, there's the personal reflections in the back of chapter one is um, is is very I hope that you guys were honest with this and this is where I would love for you guys to respond um, if you could sit down and have a conversation with your imaginary craving what do you think you would what would you say and um, I, I said this I'd say I would tell it to go away I would be tired of fighting it off and so for years I felt this desire to fight off the craving especially when I set out to lose weight I had to do something to fight this craving off and that question right there really was a slap in the face because God used that question right there to say, I, the reason I was frustrated is because I was trying to do it myself. I was trying to, um, I was trying to help this craving and help this, these habits all by myself when the reality is the Lord wanted me to crave him and to gain a hold of his strength with that. And so, I hope that you guys were really honest on this personal questions. There was one little question before I run into chapter 2. Um, this last question. Jesus quotes the truth of Scripture to defeat temptation. Have you ever used Scripture in this way? What was the result? How do you feel about the idea of using this approach? And here's what I wrote. God's truth is powerful. God's truth is powerful. If you saw my post a couple days ago, I was reading Psalm 120, no, Psalm 29, Psalm 29, and it talked about the power of God's voice. And when I read Psalm 29, sorry, I'm freaking myself out because I'm, I'm in a you know, dark place. Um, but when I read Psalm 29, just a couple days ago, and then I read this, Psalm 29 said the, the voice of God is powerful, but do we use the voice of God to overcome things that we need to overcome? God's truth is powerful, and it makes sense. If we are going to overcome the battle, the battle of, of, of cravings and the battle of food addictions and the battle of, and it may be not food or sugar for you. Maybe it's something else. So fill in the blank for you. If we're going to overcome that, we need Jesus period. And we got to replace our cravings, which brings us to chapter two. So she said on page 29, food was my comfort. Food was my reward. Food was my joy. Food was what I turned into times of stress, sadness, and even times of happiness. And I hated admitting that. I felt stupid admitting that. I felt like a spiritual failure. And I remember thinking that, like, how am I going to help other people or lead other women when I can't even say no to a cupcake or to an Oreo? So not only does the enemy tempt us and want us to crave other things than Jesus, he wants to shame us for when we do. So shame comes into play here. And I'm just going to say this. I am editing the final copy of the book. And the, the chapter on shame, it's not a coincidence that I talk about Adam and Eve in that chapter. It's not a coincidence that I talk about how the enemy wants to shame us um, when we feel like a failure. And so I love how the Lord keeps like showing me these things over and over and over. So I hope you have my book, beautifullydesigned.com, 20% off right now. And I'm totally plugging that because I believe that every single woman needs to read it because I'm just super excited about God's uh, word in it. I think that the Lord's really going to use it. The Lord's using it in my life right now, which is funny because I'm editing my book and I'm learning from God through through it something I wrote. It was crazy. So, um, on the bottom of 29, she says, I don't know about you, but I don't want to wander about in a desert, unable to enter into the abundant life God has for me because I willfully put him to the test over food. And so, wow, we have a choice right now to lay our request before God. And it, just like she it says in Psalm 5, 3, and like the psalmist said, wait in expectation. And so, we we can replace our temptations we can we're going to have those cravings period that's not going to go away our goal is to change our patterns to change our patterns to when we go to the pantry to to pick up the oreo or whatever that we turn to the lord and so some prayers that 
I've been praying since been read, since I've read chapters one and two last week is asking God to give me that conviction before I get to the pantry or before I get to the food. And so I know I know before as I'm walking up, the Lord is saying, Ashley, what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose the things that you know you shouldn't have because it's going to make you feel exhausted and miserable? Are you going to choose me? And so sometimes we have to know beforehand, before we move into that, that old pattern again in those old habits. And so I think it's the first couple chapters is almost like the realization of why we crave food and we choose food over certain things to make us feel feel better, to give us that comfort for that short time. The Lord wants to be that comfort, even if it's just for a short time. But the cool thing is, is he's not going to give us guilt and shame afterwards, and he's not going to make our, our pants not button. What the Lord wants to do is us to open up the word of God, because what if we opened up the word of God? Every single time we craved something, wouldn't we read the Bible a lot more? What if we opened up the Word of God every time that we wanted to scroll through Facebook? Wouldn't we be reading the Bible a lot more? I hope you see that the whole point of this is to create the patterns and habits to where you're in the Word of God more and you're growing your relationship with Him. And so um, it's funny because she wanted us to admit um, why we have, why we turn to food. So whether it's comfort, reward, reward, joy. So I wrote joy, stress, and happiness are the times that I crave food. So I hope you were honest there. Um, but this last question, number five, brick by brick or craving by craving, Lisa dismantled her tower of impossibility and used the same bricks to build a walkway of prayer, paving the path to victory. Brick by brick is an effective way to dismantle something, but it is also takes time and careful work and your battles with food are you more likely to choose a drastic quick fix or a moderate but longer approach what thoughts or feelings emerge when you consider dismantling your own tower of impossibility it's overwhelming is all i said so you're either in one or two categories you take something away fully and you can stay on track because you're not tempted or you allow yourself a little bit every now and then so you don't go crazy. And so I don't know where you fit. So one thing that I am doing for myself is I'm actually eliminating sweets for a certain amount of time. I'm going to probably start with 10 days and then I'm going to try to see if I can do it another 10 days. So if I can eliminate sweets and by not, not all sugar, but like sweets, like the cookies and the brownies and stuff like that. So if I can eliminate it for a short time, what happens is I create different habits in my life and I start going to going to other things because I know I can't have it. If I have it a little bit, my hand doesn't know a little bit. I keep going in for, for more, especially for Oreos. And so that's my attack. Um, that's my battle plan is to eliminate it for starting with 10 then I'll do another 10 and then I can say, okay, I'm going to have sweets once a week and then I'm going to try to like li limit it that way because sweets is what my, I crave the most. And so during this time of where I'm not having any sweets, my heart and my goal is to pray and to ask the Lord, um, Oh, I think I put my husband's wipers on, is to ask the Lord um, to take control and to ask the Lord to give me strength because it will only be by his strength that I can eliminate those sweets for 20 days. So, um, so it, so I don't know what is going on. Engine shuts off. Press OK. All right. His car is going crazy. Hang on just a second. Okay. Okay, I think I'm good here. So, I really hope that you are loving these chapters. So, starting on Monday, we're going to dive into chapters 3 and 4. I think it's 3 and 4. It may be 3, 4, and 5. I'll post on here for sure. But it's getting a plan. And so, now that we know what our issue is and, and how to replace, now it's getting our battle plan. So, um, I hope that this is giving you a desire for Jesus, a desire to open God's word, a desire to pray, a desire to grow closer to him. So just comment here uh, what some struggles that you have, some cravings that you've had, and maybe what suggestions that you're going to do that's going to help you know ahead of time what, what to stay away from and to pursue the Lord over pursuing our sweet tooth. That is the ultimate goal. 
So I love you ladies. Thank you for bearing with me in this dark vehicle. <laughs> um, and please pray for Ryan's family and all of us as we attend the funeral tomorrow. Um, and we will be camping here a couple days just to spend time with family. But um, I hope y'all have a great weekend. And Monday, y'all di start diving into chapter three. And um, But please comment here. I would love to hear how the Lord's using this book in your life. So y'all have a great night.